Thank you, Dermot Wilson, very much. And thank you to the Nipissing Regional Curatorial Collective for the invitation to bring a very in important international artist, Dori Perdomo. Mm -hmm. We have been able to have the opportunity to work with Dori for about four or five years before the, before the, um, the pandemic. And it's been a wonderful experience. I need to thank the Contemporary Art Committee. Thanks to the Contemporary Art Committee in Kerkley is that we are able to bring Dori Perdomo to come to Canada and show us and explain to us all the wonderful things that she's doing. She's not only a, a very incredible artist herself, but she's part of very beautiful activities. One of them is that she collects money to be able to get donations of wheelchairs for people with disabilities, for artists with disabilities. So then with these wheelchairs, they can continue their, their work. The other thing that she is being part of it, that she, we will see in her presentation, mm -hmm. is that she gets donations from an organization in California in order to be able to donate elevators for the museums and the galleries in Mexico that they do not have elevators and facilities for handicapped people. Wow. So imagine this. These things in Colombia, in Mexico, and everywhere in Latin America is huge because we don't have the resources to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So the buildings have worked like that with the fa without the facilities to, to, yeah, we, we've got it, to the facilities for the, for the handicapped people. Um, what else? Uh, I also need to thank it in this moment the partnerships that we do is with the Temisca Menard Gallery, who are, have always been a great supporter, like Nipissing Regional Curatorial Collective, that is a great supporter with the international artists. And this year, the Ontario Society of Artists had included in their budget annually what we are going to be doing to help us a little bit with the transportation, the, especially the inland transportation for the guest artists that is coming great. to the north. So there is, we cannot do this by ourselves. So nobody can do it. It's just... They, all of us with a little bit, little, little bit here, little bit there, that we were able to put all together to, to bring the artists. So her project, Celeste Sumergidos. ¿Qué es Celeste Sumergidos, Dori? ¿Qué, explícanos qué es Celeste. ¿Qué, qué, ¿Por de dónde viene este título? Este título viene de, del rescate de las, unas piezas de barcos que han sido desmantelados. Entonces eh, le usé el, el Celeste para nombrar los barcos. Okay. So the idea of the title of Celeste Sumergidos, that is the title of the of Dori Perdomo's project br brought to me, to Canada, is Celeste refers to the color Celeste, and she will explain later how it goes. But the idea is the name that she's giving to these boats that are normally just dismantled and become toxic for the world, because but. We need to think in this also a little poetic, no? Because the boats, they have been the, the, the source of income for many families who have worked on these boats. And what happened is that after they have had, they have been on the ocean for so many years, then they are not useful, they are not functional anymore. So then they need to discard, discard them. And what we do is they become garbage. So Dori is taking this idea and giving it another connotation, something that she can make art out of these pieces of boats. Mm -hmm. yeah? I want to make a little bit of... Uh, Dori Perdomo is originally from Colombia, but she lives in Mexico already for 35 years. So she's Mexican, Colombian, and... Uh, but I feel that Mexi Dori is really an artist of the, of the planet. She's an artist an international artist. She has traveled everywhere, present her work in many places. She collaborated with many organizations in California, in Mexico, Colombia, and in other places in Latin America. And she has shown her work also in all these places. Um, her background is in chemistry, and we will see that in her work. It's very interesting the way she approached the, the, the technique of her work that is it's as a chemist, it's not the, 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 the regular process of, a, of an artist. Uh, she's based in Mazatlan for about 30 years in, in Mexico, and started her career at 16 years old. 
she has more than 20 individuals uh, around the world and she has participated in uh, more than 50 collectives mm. in many places. <laughs> in her works we can see painting, uh, graphic, her background is also in printmaking, a sculpture and photograph. Eh, so, cuéntanos un poquito, Dori, tú qué haces, ¿Qué, qué, de dónde, todas estas actividades en las que tú estás involucrada. Aquí vemos que eres el, 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 la directora de Baupres, que estás en, en muchas ocasiones, y qué es esto, ¿qué es Baupres? ¿Qué es it, Baupres? Eh, Baupres es un centro cultural dedicado a la creación, a la exhibición y a la venta de arte. ¿Y dónde está Baupres? Eh, está en Mazatlán, Sinaloa. Eh, también Baupres eh, apoya las residencias para artistas de alta factura, creadores para artistas emergentes y trabaja también con la comunidad con discapacidad. So, she is the creator of Baupres organization in Mazatlán. She runs this place and Baupres is, collaborates with the University of Sinaloa to create the, the project that, that we're working on that is a residency program for, for students. But she has also a residency program inside Baupres that is for professional artists and for emerging artists to come and work in, 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 in Mazatlán and create works. Um, and she also works with the organization Special Dreams that is based in California and the, they are the ones helping to create the projects for uh, the, for the, the donations of the wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning of our residency uh, last year in Mazatlan. This is Gabriel Gabriel Miranda, who is uh, from from uh, me, uh, Spain. The artists that were in the in the previous picture were also from Spain and Colombia. Myself. This is Glenn Rogers from the U.S. and, and the, the guy is uh, Jewish from um, from uh, Spain, from Mallorca. I like that piece. Yeah, that was from uh, 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 Glenn Rogers. So here is the idea of helping artists with disability to be able to continue and having the support to do their work. Entonces. Cuéntanos un poquitico ahora qué es este proyecto de la locura del plástico que es uniendo fronteras y, y, y qué, cuáles son estas otras actividades que tú estás haciendo. Eh, la locura del plástico es una exposición internacional itinerante que se inició por, pues, por la idea de la maestra Glenn Roger. Eh, nos, se trata de reciclar, transformar todo el plástico de alta duración para que no pues no siga contaminando el planeta. Mm -hmm. So la locura the the plastic madness that is the project is entirely with the function of trying to see all this plastic that is deteriorating our planet mm -hmm. and it's plastic of high resistant plastic that is heavily it takes forever to the to decompose and, and to contaminate. So then is taking this plastic and making artwork with the plastic. Mm -hmm. That's the idea of the, of the project, of, which has a lot of to be with the project that we've been working and creating for already five, six years, mm -hmm. also of the broken forest. <coughs> it's a different approach, but it, they relate. That's mm -hmm. why we have, have all some of the connections. Mm -hmm. And ¿y qué es Uniendo Fronteras? Eh, Uniendo Fronteras es un proyecto que se gestionó por eh, invitación del artista Michael Dergar, eh, fundador de la fundación de sueños especiales que funciona en California por 13 años. Entonces, se, se, es, nosotros en Común hicimos un proyecto se, que se llama Uniendo Fronteras, que se trata de llevar, de clonar el proyecto de Michael Dergar en otros países. Empezamos okay. por México. So, the, the, uh, Uniendo Fronteras is, uh, works together with the Special Dream Project. And my, Uniendo Fronteras is lead by Michael Dergar, who is the person that is in, in California, and he gets the sponsorships to be able to help the artists with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And I want to mention the name Glenn Rogers, that he was in the picture. She, Glenn Rogers is the creator, creator of uh, the Plastic Madness. 
So then Glenn is Plastic Madness, Michael Dergar is Uniendo Fronteras, and uh, the uh, Special Dreams. Mm -hmm. So here is Glenn Rogers in the La Locura del Plástico. This project took place in, in, in the Museum de Naval in Cartagena de Indias, in Colombia, that was. The, but the plan with this project is that it's going to be an itinerary project that is going to continue going and traveling to other museums in Colombia. It's going to be at the. ¿Cuáles son los otros museos que van a estar? Va a estar en 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 Neiva la Universidad Sur Colombia y va a estar en el Museo de Arte de del Tolima y va a estar en cómo se llama. En Bucaramanga, en Bucaramanga, el Museo Contemporáneo y Bucaramanga. también en Coveñas en el Museo Naval. So in this moment they already have four locations with major museums where the presentations are going to be, and these are museums with the that, that are at the national level. So it's not private galleries. So these are museums. Mm -hmm. This is one of the pictures of the in, in the in the Museum Naval. And now here is uh, the, the works with the special uh, uh, dream uh, children on uh, youth that are in, in Mazatlán. Cuéntanos acerca de estas fotos, uh, Dori. ¿Qué es lo que está pasando acá? Uh, este es el parte del proyecto Uniendo Fronteras. El proyecto Uniendo Fronteras eh, vende, visualiza, patrocina eh, las clases para artistas eh, con discapacidad. Entonces nosotros formamos a estos niños para que sean artistas, dándoles todas so, esas oportunidades. So the whole purpose of Uniendo Fronteras is to give these kids the opportunity that they can develop into professional artists to create some kind of craft or activity or painting, a sculpture uh, or a craft that they can make living out of it and make crafts that they can sell to the tourists that are coming constantly to Mazatlán, uh, but they can become independent from this. This is host in the rooftop of Baupres Gallery in, in, in Mazatlán. And like I mentioned before, the idea is with the, how, to, how cómo, cómo consiguen las, las, las sillas de ruedas. Cuéntanos que, cómo, cómo llegan estas sillas de ruedas a, a, a Mazatlán. Mm, es, estas sillas de ruedas las donan los Rotarios de California. Okay, las de Gares eh, Rotario. So they are donated, the, the wheelchairs get to Mazatlán by the Rotary from, from <coughs> California. Mm -hmm. Here I'm going to point. This is Michael Derger, Tori Perdomo, and who are the other people? Es, ¿Quiénes son los otros? En el Museo de Arte es el director, Maestro Jardines, que es el director, el Maestro Felipe, que es el coordinador del proyecto Uniendo Fronteras en México, y la eh, secretaria. ¿Qué secretaria? Ok, perfecto. Él es el, el director de, de en Mazatlán de Los Rotarios. Ok, perfecto. I don't think that needs translation. This was the setup for an exhibition that we did last year in Sina in uh, Mazatlan. The start of the year that it was th the project was based on, on the everything that we lost during the COVID. And but in in this project, uh, this piece, it was by Michael Derger. It was specifically about the when we have uh, wheelchairs and we have all these steps. And it's impossible to reach that place. That, so that was a, one of the iconic pieces into that exhibition. More of the wheelchairs. ¿Cómo consiguen los fondos, que eso es lo que estamos viendo acá, para mm. poder seguir funcionando? ¿Qué, qué pasa? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo ustedes hacen esta gala? ¿De dónde sale? ¿Cómo, cómo se, ¿Qué es lo que pasa para poder hacer este trabajo? Eh, bueno, esta gala... Eh, se ha hecho con, con la, la colaboración entre el Instituto Municipal de Cultura y Arte de Mazatlán. Ellos donan el, el teatro y la, los, las eh, instituciones eh, que nos puedan servir, por ejemplo, la Casa Haas también, para nosotros hacer esa gala. Y la Fundación de Sueños Especiales, eh, ellos este, mm, se aportan donas, por donación. Eh, se hacen muchas donaciones para... 
eh, todo lo que se haga uh, sea necesario para hacer la gala. So every year what they are doing is they're they're running a gala, fundraising a gala which is sponsored by the theater in Mazatlán and the uh, Galería Ángela Peralta, which is a national gallery. And they host a very beautiful gala, and with the funds that are re received and captured during the, during the gala, is that they are helping to create these elevators and install the elevators in the facilities in the museums. The other thing that is happening is that the artists themselves, we are helping. We are donating pieces and making art and giving it to Mazatlán and giving it to Baupres to be able to support this cause. All of us have been doing it. Mm -hmm. So we go directly to the, her artwork. So, but I thought that the two elements were very important. I always think that artists that are involved and part of social activities mm -hmm. are very important because we are the ones who are changing Uh, we're changing the world, basically. Mm -hmm. It's not only making our, our beautiful work. Mm -hmm. her, uh, Dolly Perdomo by herself, she's an incredible artist. But her, her job of helping other people, I think, is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, entonces, vamos a ver el proyecto de Azul Celeste. Entonces, cuéntanos un poquito de, de dónde viene la inspiración del proyecto. La, la inspiración de lo que tienes acá ok el, el, la inspiración de este proyecto es la belleza que tienen las piezas eh, de los barcos del, de todo lo, lo que es la huella del tiempo el color las texturas el, cuando se desmantelan los barcos este, se recuperan estas piezas y pues se trata de, de rescatar las piezas para que no contaminen, básicamente. Okay. So the, the inspiration for this project is really to give a second chance. Kind of like the same thing that she's doing also in the other part of the project, no? helping people with disabilities, giving them another opportunity. So the same thing is happening here with the boats. These boats are supposed to be just discharged and, and throw as garbage. There is nothing. They become just waste and contaminators of the world. So... Uh, Dory finds beauty in something that is already meant to disappear and disintegrate for a very long time in the planet. And it is that through the years, many, many years and layers of paint on the surface of the boat or the pieces inside of the boat, then this material, she finds beauty into that and rescue and cut the section to transform them and give them a chemical process to make them into our pieces. Uh, there is a poem here. ¿Qué es la importancia de este poema? Este poema lo escribió una poeta que se llama... Eh, Mona Basúa. Norma Basúa. Norma Basúa. Norma Basúa. Eh, pues... Creo que ese es... Yeah. Norma Basúa. Sí, Norma Basúa. Sí. Ella, habla, ella tiene un poema muy bello sobre el mar. Sobre el, el, el significado de... de de la poética del mar. Okay, so there es is this de, poem de poem. from Norma Basua, mm -hmm. and she wrote this poem about mm -hmm. the poetics of the mm -hmm. ocean, but the poetics of the ocean also goes with the life of these boats, no? and the people behind the boats, the, the, the romanticism of people who have invested their lives through these, through these boats, and it has been their source of, source of income to, to have their life. The poem says... But when you read it, do you want me to read? Pero, I can read it in Spanish first. No, no recuerdo, <coughs> no recuerdo. I don't remember any of any your words. Of these words. Yeah. Pero cuando te leo, but when I read you, yeah. you pull me through the deep of the oceans. Mm -hmm. Then, then I know that you know more about the ocean. You see the mar, the ocean. Mm -hmm. But the paint is also the the story of those layers of years and years of the of the boats. Okay, entonces cuéntanos un poco ahora. Las personas pueden ir leyendo lo que está en inglés ahí. People can read what it is in English. 
cuéntanos cómo haces tu proceso, qué es lo que pasa, cómo, cómo encuentras y cómo seleccionas el material en el que tú vas a trabajar. Bueno, el, el, la, primera, la primera intención es visitar un astillero o un deshuesadero de barcos, un basurón, donde quiera que hayan piezas, eh, y seleccionar un, un objeto para intervenir. So the first thing that she does is she, she goes to a place, let's call it like a boat cemetery, mm -hmm. where they are just going to throw them there and leave them contaminated, and she goes to this place and try to find what can she take from that boat and make it into our pieces. Mm -hmm. Entonces, una vez tú encuentras una de las piezas, ¿qué pasa, Lori? Después de que se encuentra una de las piezas, e inicia el rescate. Eh, se saca, se selecciona, se limpia y empieza el proceso de, de rescate de, de todos los valores cromáticos, de textura eh, y de envejecimiento que tenga la pieza. So what she's saying is that she goes and when she finds the piece, what she does is she rescues the piece. The piece is already there, it's already created. So what she's going to go is to reevaluate the chromatic values of the of what it is inside that little section that she cuts from the boat or she takes for example the the bath inside of the of the boat you know the bath is where, where they put all the ice and when the fisherman bring the, the the fish they put it in the bath and cover everything all the fish with the ice mm -hmm. so then she finds this bath and then she cuts sections of it that they become the art pieces. But they already have layers and layers of paint for many years. And then she feels like she's a, a person that is restoring this painting. She's not making the new painting. She's a restorer of the painting. And her background, remember, that is in chemistry. ¿Y esto aquí qué pasó, por ejemplo? Bueno, esa es parte de la visita al astillero y, y de la selección de, de las piezas that she's just making selection when she finds beauty in certain objects and trying to see what it is. The proceso creativo. That's the, pro the creative process. El proceso creativo, the creative process. So, cuéntanos, primero qué es? El primero es eh, escoger la pieza. The first one is to choose the piece. Seleccionar. To make the selection. Find the beauty within the... the, the si, sí, algunas piezas tienen otros materiales como hierro, incrustado, eh, cobre, y no son aptas. Se tiene que... Yo escojo las piezas que son 100% hechas con materiales tóxicos. So, she makes sure that the pieces that she's selecting are pieces that are 100% toxic Maderas. and that they are going to... And she takes, for example, if they have copper or iron or something like that, she takes it and give it so then they can recycle this, they can mm -hmm. reprocess this. So what she's only going to work is what the toxic part. Oh. Yeah. The el segundo del objetivo de selección es eso, ¿no? Sí. Yeah. And then she dismounted these pieces. Mm -hmm. And notice all these fibers and everything that is the toxic, she, she start cleaning and, and, and yeah, that's cleaning, that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Es limpieza. Es es poliuretano. Es espuma de poliuretano, que poliuretano? es muy, muy tóxica. Uh, styrofoam? Or? Styrofoam, yeah. Yeah, sí. yeah. Mm -hmm. Limpieza. And then it comes the cleaning process mm -hmm. in the studio already. Right. Once the pieces are come, Then she has cut it, selected them. Then she needs to start doing all the cleaning process, which is really demanding. And it, ¿Cómo se hace este, pro este proceso? ¿Es con otros químicos? ¿Con, con agua, jabón? ¿Qué es? Sí, eh, se retira la pieza y se lava primero con agua y jabón, con mucho cuidado para no desprender pinturas, texturas o color. The, the first step is cleaning it with soap and water, mm -hmm. but very careful not to deteriorate or damage the colors. Mm -hmm. But she wants to keep those colors that are already there. ¿Y después? Bueno, después se seca y las partes que se hayan soltado, que estén sueltas, se vuelven a, a integrar a la pieza. Se vuelven a pegar. Okay, so then the, is the restoring of the piece itself. Because when you are cleaning and washing, some pieces come off. And then she carefully takes the pieces, like, like, a, like any other person that is restoring a masterpiece, 
she takes the pieces and glues them back, the little pieces of, of paint or something that came off, and put them back exactly where they belong. Y el cuarto proceso es... Bueno, el cuarto proceso es la restauración, que es la parte más bella porque se, empieza, se le empieza a retribuir a la pieza lo que ha perdido, el color y, y el detener la, la, el daño que, que por el tiempo se ha causado en la pieza. Ok. So then she, in this moment, she is already talking about art pieces. So then they need to recover their color, their hues, their values, everything that, that the, the time has come to deteriorate and has grown on top of the piece. Many of these things, she started making the selection, what needs to be kept and what needs to be gone because the piece is, is the beauty is already there. Mm -hmm. And now there is the change from the piece that we saw before and now this one. It's the same piece, she's just rescuing the color. Mm. It's a chemical process. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not just painting. It's a chemical process to be able to re rescue the color that was there. Mm -hmm. Like, look at this one. And this is how the piece starts to come alive. Mm -hmm. que, el, que el proceso se tiene que hacer eh, con los respetar los materiales que con los que técnicamente se hizo la pieza, porque si se si se interviene con, por ejemplo. Eh, silicón se desprende o sea, tiene que hacerse un estudio muy exhaustivo sobre cómo una investigación sobre cómo la pieza fue hecha en sus inicios cuando se creó so something that she goes is she goes back to the history of how this piece was created that's her background in chemistry <coughs> because she tries to use and incorporate the same materials that were in the process of years of years and layers of paint that she wants to keep those and use the same products to rescue the colors. Could, could Dory use salt? Or usar salt not used at all? Usa sal o no no, sal no, 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 no. Eh, la oxidación y todo, todo el proceso químico eh, mm. lo tiene la pieza impreso. Mm. Yo solamente lo rescato, lo respeto, lo limpio, lo, lo traigo the, de nuevo. The oxidation process is already in the piece, so she does is just go slowly with different chemical components so, to try to rescue the color. Abrasivos? Sin abrasivos, no, no, no. sin abrasivo. No, los abrasivos lo destruyen. Yeah, nothing that is sanding or just no. chemical. So look at the process, and that's the piece after restoring it. La misma. <laughs> so Increíble. all the colors that, yeah, sí. <laughs> came from there. Sí, es descubrir cada vez que, que limpias, descubres cómo fue hecha la piel, cuál fue su primera pintura y empiezas a restaurar de abajo para arriba. So it's more like restoring and finding how this piece was created over the years, fr from the first layer up to the last layer, from layers and layers and layers of paint. And this is how the pieces look at the end. It's magical. It's Mm -hmm. It's really, mm -hmm. and I love the, the fact that she put these sunsets, no? And mm -hmm. the boats on the sunsets, and then it's like, it's almost like you're taking a section of this sky and putting it on top of the boat. That el universo. Sí, el universo. Sí, que las piezas siempre mm -hmm. trato de que los, le, la, la inspiración sea el universo, la tierra y el agua. The, the, for her, the, the idea is the universe. The universe, the water, el, 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 the sky, el cielo y siempre me, me apoyo en libros de geología para, para eh, estar como en contacto con, con los colores, con la paleta que natural va. That she always uses a reference geology books to inspire herself on the idea of what it, that this piece also belongs to the water, to the earth, to the sky. So it's, it's, a, it's a historical process. Mm -hmm. This is how the piece is called. To that. I the, the last part is the presentation, not the exhibition itself. She thinks that the piece itself has to talk to her and tell her what 
what is going to be displayed, please? How the piece wants to be displayed? Is it on the wall? Is it on the floor? How is it going to be presented? The piece has to tell her where where she wants, where the piece wants to be. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't make the decision. The piece tells <laughs> her what to do, what to do. For example, this one goes on the floor. It's a floor piece. Beauty is out there everywhere. No, sigue. No, no, sigue. No, sigue. Sí. No, es una, copy? no, es una prueba de cómo eh, estamos copiando el barco. Okay, so she's showing us how she's copying all this oxidation process of the of the boat in mm -hmm. on the piece. And, 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 notice, para que salga, and notice how the piece comes out. Yeah. Y hay otras que siguen y, okay. y el banco el, el de las sigue. A esa también está la camufla. And this is what it becomes the piece. Estamos, estamos. Eh, It's beautiful, eh? Yeah. I love it. I love the magic of it. Y yeah. luego sigue un, una, un, unas fotografías de, de todo lo que es el astillero. So she wants to show us some photographs that she has taken from the the the, the, the place where the boats are. Oh, El astillero. Yeah, yeah. This is. Yeah. Sí, dale para que y ya después cuando llegues a las piezas se. Eh. Sí, es es. And es. the credits to all the people who have participated into this project. Mm -hmm. And that's her. Y ahí sigue solo. Sí, es el, el, es el astillero y los barcos, eh, como, los, como los desmantelan. How they are dismantled and taken into pieces. Sure. Okay. I, I kind of, I just wanted to ask a question. Is sure, go ahead. Um, <coughs> so I'm, I'm just thinking... How beautiful it is that there is a family connection here. Que hay, hay una conexión de tu familia con este proyecto. And and I see it as the family who ran that boat, or the many families who ran that boat for their whole lives. Okay. No, his his <coughs> question, his point is that there is a family connection because mm -hmm. what it is here is that oh, so I, learned, I am talking in English. Sorry. <laughs> que lo que hay es una, una conexión con la familia porque es las familias que se han alimentado y han vivido de estos botes ¿no? que, que hay, una, hay una conexión directa de, de la historia del trabajo de la historia del arte de, estos, de estas piezas que tú crees con la historia de las familias detrás de estos botes en oposición en oposición a la industria industry. Right. Que, que está opuesto a la, a la intención del, del, del capitalismo de la pesca, ¿no? Por supuesto. Por ejemplo, cada el, el desmantelamiento eh, se, se implantó para mm, desa, deshacer la, la flota que estaba en malas condiciones y, y las personas que tuviesen un barco nada más. Entonces, eh, cuando desmantelas la, el barco, estás también destruyendo la vida o, o la forma de vivir de esa familia, de ese hombre que mantiene a una familia. The, it is completely connected sí. with, the, with the, there is a, a man yeah. that was used to run and have this boat and mm -hmm. feed the family from this boat, mm -hmm. but then the boat all of a sudden doesn't have the conditions to keep going to the ocean and then it becomes just garbage. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then... And, and, and the other side, the, the factory fishing, they are, they, you know, they, they don't, <coughs> this is not a part of their lives, this is simply an inventory item. Yeah. You know, que en, en las fábricas de botes, esto no es acerca de la vida de nadie, sino que es simplemente, es un bote que hay que sacarlo. Mm -hmm. Ah, y, por supuesto. Sí, y construir otro. Sí, pero los barcos suben astillero a repararse. Eh, año por año se dan apoyos a, a los armadores para combustible y para mantenimiento. Pero hay personas que, que no, no aplican porque tienen un barco, no son grandes empresas. Yeah, y por eso it, sucumben. It is only here, for example, one of the stories is that the, the person is only one, a single, an individual. And 
the boats need to go back every year to be fixed and, 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 and organized. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes they cannot make it because they, the boats have already don't pass the test to be fixed or to be have a maintenance. It's like the same thing that we do with the cars here, no? You like see. they don't not no longer is is no longer good mm -hmm. enough to be keep running. But mm -hmm. then they are not they don't have a flood, they don't have a whole bunch of several boats to keep going with their business. Mm -hmm. They only have this boat which is the source of income for the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally uh, difficult. So it's mm -hmm. there's a little bit of melancholy on the on the on the work in the back. <clears throat> yeah, I I also see a kind of string of Anti-capitalism within, the within, the, within, the, within this project, not so much, but definitely within Plastic Mad Madness, that is an anti-capitalist. Que el proyecto uh, que, que, usted, que que se ve un proyecto como el que tú estás manejando de, de la locura del plástico, que es una idea como de anticapitalismo, que 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 ese, esa idea del consumer, del consumismo sí. uh -huh. está destruyéndonos. Sí es. Este proyecto, eh, su objetivo principal eh, no es decorar una casa ni, ni venderse, sino hacer conciencia del reuso el, o, o el reuso de todos los materiales tóxicos y el no consumir. Right, well, this is very important what she's saying, no? Yeah. That her intention is never to make an art piece that is going to be, to be sell. Mm -hmm. It's, she's just restoring these pieces to make conscious of what we are doing to the planet, what we are doing with these pieces. So mm -hmm. that's very important here. She has never created these pieces with the intention that I'm going to sell this so I can decorate a house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or create a consumer object. A consumer object, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Really loved it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.